video tutorial on making a simple pencil box. Now the first tool I'm going to be using is my rectangle tool. I'm just going to make a rectangle of any size. I don't want it like that. I want it like that. There we go. Rectangle of any size and without clicking I can see down here and you can too on yours that the box is currently set to four feet by two feet. I don't need a box that large. I need it more like six inches by three and a half inches. So all I'm going to do is type six quotation mark comma 3.5 quotation mark and enter and that's going to make my six inch by three and a half inch box. Now you might notice the box is really small. So what we now have to do is zoom in onto the box. Now you can zoom in using a scroll wheel on a mouse or you can use this tool here. So I'm clicking the orbit opening up that tool set and then using zoom. Next, I need to be using my ruler tool because I need to make some really precise measurements on this box. So I'm making sure I'm on my tape measure. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that back line and I'm just going to drag the dotted line out. I click it to set it and then I want to type 1 slash 1 6 inches. So I want it to be 1 and 1 16th inch on the side or on the back side, I should say. And then again, I'm going to do the same thing on this side, but I'm going to make this one one com or slash eight <coughs> quotation mark inches. So that turns it into one eighth inch. Same thing over here. You can also click and then drag and find the appropriate size that you need. That is also another option to do that. And then this front area here, I need this to be one sixteenth of an inch. Yep. One slash one six. There we go. All right. Now I'm going to take my line tool here. I'm simply going to trace the box that I've created. Uh, those dotted lines, I should say. So we'll go here. You can see I'm having to go intersection to intersection. You could also do this with the rectangle tool. That actually would probably have been easier to do. Save a little bit of time, but that's okay. So now that I have that box created, I can go ahead and take this rule or this eraser tool. And I can delete these lines like so. And I'm slowly getting there. The next thing I have to do is grab my tape measure tool again because now I need to make my specific box sections. So from the edge of the box, I'm going to make a line at one and three slash four, so three quarter inches. You could also type 1.75. That would also work. I'll show that one. So same thing on this side, 1.75. And then making sure I use my inches. Yeah. Apparently I hit something else there. So we'll do one and three slash four inches just to make it work. All right. So you can see sometimes I have issues making it work. If that's the case, you know, just start over again. It's not, not the end of the world if you have to redo a line here. So one and three slash four. There we go. Next, I'm going to want to make a, another line here. We'll put this at one and three quarter inches as well. And then same thing on this side. Setting that at one and three quarter inches. Come on. So you can see I can't seem to find it for whatever reason. There we go. So I have one and three quarter inches there. And then I'm just going to want to make a line right there. That's one and five sixteenths. And then another one at one and fifteen sixteenths. Sorry, one and fifteen sixteenths. Next, I will just simply take my line tool and I'm going to trace these boxes 
I need to make sure that I'm not clicking on the very edge at this point of our box. Instead, I'm wanting to connect it to that inner box we've created, like so. And while you're doing this, you might find that you're running into some issues. You could always try using that rectangle tool. That always helps. If you get an issue where you're creating a line and it starts making more lines as you're clicking, like you can see this. There we go. You can see this one's doing that. All you have to do is just click again and just hide the line just to make it easier for yourself. Now I'm using my eraser tool to delete these dotted lines. Scroll in so you can see that inner box that we created and we want to delete the lines of the inner box that are joining the other boxes. You'll see why this is important in just a second. Once you have that completed, you're going to use your push-pull tool, and you want to bring this up just a little bit because you need to make uh, an area that's going to be filled with plastic for when these are 3D printed, and it knows where it's going. Now, the way I'm keeping all of these level with each other is I've determined that my middle box is the one I want. And then when I do my push-pull tool, I'm dragging, so eventually the cursor, so I'm clicking and dragging, till the cursor is over on the top face of the box. And what that does is it allows it to all be at the same level. It's setting it at that same height. Once you have that ready, we can raise this up once and then raise this up again. And you can see now you have a very simple pencil box. I'm gonna make this one, you know what, I'm going to make this one, we'll put it at, start over, control Z to start over. Let's put this one at three inches to start, like that. And then I'm just going to add a little decoration to this. I'm gonna make this a little more personal, make it a little cooler for myself. And in my rectangle tool, I'm going to be using this polygon tool. I'm just going to make a few polygons Kind of like this, and you can see I'm trying to keep this from crossing over into that middle bracket there. And then I'll just take my push-pull tool, and I'm wanting to connect it to the inner edge of that box, uh, that tiny box we created. So you can see it doesn't look like it's done anything, but if I go over to the side here and zoom in, I get a little bit better view. You can see I can remake those as such. And the reason I'm doing that is so then it's creating these cutout holes. Maybe I want to do my initials. Probably the easiest way to do that is actually to just use this line tool. And maybe I will go here to here. All right, so my first name is Will, so I need a W. You can see I'm just going to make this W. It's making it a little more personalized this way. And then grab that. Hooray, it looks like a third grader made a W. I'm sure third graders have better handwriting. Than me. And then I'm just going to push pull that back so it cuts it out nicely like that. All right, make sure you customize yours however you want. And when you're ready to print these out, all you have to do is first click Save because you need to save the creation that you're doing. And then let me save this. Might take a little bit of time to save. And then you're going to need to convert it to an STL file and then submit it to me on Google Classroom. To do that, you click the file folder, export, and then STL file. 
Simple as that, it's going to ask you to save it, and then you just save it and upload it as a normal document. All right, thanks for watching.